edition of Sticks and Stones. I am your host, Brent Elrod, coming to you from the cozy confines here on the patio at the No Shoes Bar and Grill, deep in the heart of the Republic of Texas. I have a wonderful show for you today. I am pairing a punch signature with Still Austin Straight Bourbon. I think it's going to be a great matchup, so right after this we are going to pop the cork, cut the stick, and get to toasting. Now, you know, I always like full disclosure, and I was sampling, if you catched, catch, caught my reel a couple of days ago, I was doing some, uh, some show research, and I was smoking a punch signature, and I will be sharing some photos from that. Uh, that particular cigar, throughout the smoke, came completely apart. The cap came off of it. A big piece of the wrapper came off of it. Um, it, it just, uh, it was really dry. And I had made a, a point of checking my humidity in my King Chi cigar cabinet before I brought it out and, and fired it up. And it was at a, what I consider a perfect 72 degrees. Uh, and so I went back just to make sure that I hadn't remembered something wrong. I do have that kind of problem. And yes, it was at 72 degrees. It had been in my humidor for about four or five days. Uh, so it must have been pretty dry upon receipt. Um, so I'm going to be watching this one very closely. It's had a couple of more days uh, in my uh, King Chi cigar cabinet. So I'm hoping it is going to work out much better. But uh, Punch, you know, they began producing cigars back around uh, 1840. So they are starting to approach 200 years of cigar making. They should know how to do it, right? Uh, this particular offering is a filler and binder that, I mean, a filler that is Dominican and Nicaraguan. I'll get it all out here in a minute. It has a binder that is a Connecticut Habano and that is cloaked in an Ecuadorian Corojo. Now, this is a Robusto. For those of you that are uh, watching this live on uh, Insta right now, you can see it. Uh, it is a five by 54. That's what they consider a Robusto. Uh, visually, it is a medium to dark brown. It has a, an oily, kind of shiny uh, look to it. The, uh, the wrap, has, I mean, visible seams, but they are tied. And it does have, I noticed this with the first one, and this one is not quite as much, but still there. That is, it is some, some heavy veining. Now that doesn't mean a lot of veining. That means the veins that are there are very pronounced. Um, and then it does have a double cap. So we're gonna see if this one comes out a little bit better. Now on the nose, I get uh, pepper and maybe some coffee. Um, some cedar. Some hints of cinnamon and uh, also kind of a touch of a, a sugary sweetness. Let's give it a cut. Test out the cold draw. I am using my C-Car V-Cutter today. I prefer the V-Cut over any other cut. But to each his own. Good looking cut. That's got a, a really gentle draw to it. I'll, I'll give more once I get it lit and see if it's a little overly easy, but for right now, I think it's gonna be okay. On the cold draw, I 
get predominantly leather and cedar, but I'm also getting a little bit of a kind of a peppery spiciness, kind of along the lines of a cayenne pepper, and uh, and maybe a just a hint of like some dried raisins or something along those lines. All right, now still Austin, the music the. I'm going to get it out in just a second. The musician is uh, it's from the Still Austin Austin Whis Whiskey Company. I swear I have not been drinking today. I have not. So this is just me being normal. Uh, it is a Texas bourbon. The uh, the Texas whiskey industry is still relatively in its in its infancy, having not officially existed until the early 2000s. So compared to some of the Scotch and Irish distilleries that, that even go back as far as like the 15, 1600s, th these are still babies. But some of the brands have really taken off. Uh, still Austin is, is becoming one of those. Uh, it was founded in 2015 in Austin. That's where it gets its name from. And they released the Musician Straight Bourbon in 2020. Now, Nancy Fraley, is their master blender, and she was the mastermind behind uh, the Joseph Magnus cigar blend, as well as many other whiskeys across you know the industry. So she she brings some clout to this particular offering. Uh, they use a it's called a slow water reduction process, where water is slowly added uh, to the barrel during the aging process. And they claim that this process allows the, uh, the alcohol to extract more of the, the rich tannins, or I think like woodiness, uh, while the water itself tends to pull more of the caramelized sugar from the char. Now, this technique allows the blender to fine tune these flavor combinations by reducing the barrel proof slowly. Speaking of proof, this is a 49.24 proof, 90, I mean, uh, percent alcohol by volume, 98.4 proof. Its uh, mash bill is 70% white corn, 25% rye, and 5% malted barley. And all of those grains are sourced right here in Texas. Now, it's aged at least two years, but this is a technically a non-age statement whiskey. Let's go ahead and glass up some. Now, visually, this is really along the lines of, uh, you know, like a really classic bourbon. I would akin it almost to uh, a maker's mark as far as color. It's got a, just a really beautiful red copper hue to it. And it's got really good legs. Clings well to the glass on the nose. I get... Uh, like a baking pie crust. I get caramel. Uh, there's a little bit of spice to it. Uh, something along the lines of like cornmeal. There's, there's a good graininess to it uh, on the nose with some vanilla. And uh, some baking spices. And then rounded out with some oak and possibly a little bit of uh, peanut. Now, on the tongue, sorry, that may have came out wrong. Now on the palate, I get uh, quite a bit of sweetness. Uh, of course, it is, it is a, uh, the high corn content, and the more corn that's in it, the sweeter it's going to be. But there is a little bit of spice to it, uh, which is that's from the rye. I 
I get something along the lines of uh, like a marmalade, not just like a regular jelly, but that next step up. Uh, there's some cinnamon, maybe some roasted nuts. Um, dried plums or dates, uh, a little bit of cocoa. There is some oak, uh, not as much as what I would expect. And of course, that's probably due to this slow water process that they're talking about. Uh, it doesn't impart as much heavy woodiness. And I think I'm even really picking up some, like some bananas too. Uh, there's a, a lot going on in this glass. Uh, the finish, now the finish is very long. There is uh, a medium alcohol burn. Um, it, it, it was really a little higher than I expected consider this is under 100 proof. So it, it, had, it had some burn to it to be under 100, but very manageable. Um, and you get some, some notes of honey blended with oak, cinnamon, maybe even some cloves. And then there's just a touch of kind of a mocha all kind of underneath all of that. Uh, this is a very, very complex whiskey. I'm, I'm really surprised. Uh, I mean, I had good hopes for this, but it, so far it's really turning out to be better than I hoped for. So let's go ahead and light up our stick and see how it's going to do for us. Using my Rocky Patel 5 torch, you all... You watch the episode, you know I love this lighter. It is my fave. You can find it. Uh, you can find a link to it on my Amazon store. Uh, there's a link in the bio on Instagram. Uh, I've got a whole list of things in one of their ideas that is uh, nothing but cigar and pipe accessories and things like that. And that Rocky Patel 5 Torch, the Envoy, is one of them. I love it. Really good smoke production. Uh, I get uh, molasses, maybe a little bit of uh, like lemon zest. some uh, sweet tobacco, some cedar. There is a little bit of pepper spiciness to it and maybe just a hint of uh, kind of a mixed berries, not, not any one particular berry. Try them together. Those do go really well together. I'm, I'm really pleased. I, I always love that effect. I love the, the, the smoke hanging in the glass. <clears throat> All right. I am, uh, I'm going to go ahead and burn this down to the halfway point, and then I will come back and give you an update. For those of you on Instagram, I have to say I do. And you can uh, see the rest of the review on, or re hear the rest of the review when the audio comes out in a couple of days. Y'all have a great Labor Day weekend. Hey, stoners. I am back. Here at the half, uh, the stick is offering up uh, some, uh, some more citrus. I know I, I said uh, lemon zest earlier. It's really kind of moved into... Uh, a little more of a broad range citrus than just lemon. Um, 
it, there's a kind of a smokiness to it. You know, it's, it is burning. Uh, a cedar and uh, leather. And there's a, kind of a spice forward with uh, chocolate and coffee and kind of a creaminess and support in the background. Uh, the Still Austin is delicious. Uh, it, like I said, it does have uh, a fairly significant amount of burn to be under 100 proof, but it is very manageable and the flavor profile is excellent. Uh, I think these are going uh, pretty well together and so far the, the punch, the test cigar the other day appears to have been an anomaly because this was in the same package and it is working just fine. So I got a bad one the first time out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and burn this down the rest of the way, and then I will come back and give you my final thoughts. Hey, stoners. I am back. We are down to the band, and the glass is empty. The, uh, the palate elements of creaminess and chocolate and coffee, citrus, all of that kind of stuff, they stayed consistent through the last half, but uh, they did kind of ramp up quite a bit. It blended well with the sweetness, fruit, and nuttiness uh, in the spirit. Uh, I was, before I even lit it up, I was ready to write this stick off after what happened uh, in my test smoke uh, a couple of days ago, but this turned out to be an excellent stick and it went very well with the, uh, the Still Austin, the musician. Uh, and I believe this stick helped redeem, redeem the, this, this cigar for me. Uh, I would give, still taking into consideration the way that cigar came apart, uh, and it was sealed in the same, it was a five pack, and uh, it was sealed in the same package, so given the way it just exploded on me, I have to, you know, deduct some points for that, uh, but it was a really good good cigar. I would give it a, uh, I was going to give it an 80 I think I'd probably maybe up that to about an 85. Uh, you know, Punch is one of the, the most well-known cigars on the planet, and uh, I've smoked a lot of Punch cigars over the last 20 years, and I'd never had one do that. So, you know, but but I do have to, I do have to try it and be, you know, be equitable here. Be not not say, well, it's Punch, so I'm just going to say, oh, it's no problem. You know, it was, but anyway. Uh, the spirit was extremely good. Uh, I think the only thing that might do this spirit even better is if instead of the uh, minimum two years of aging, bump that on up to about three to five. Give it a little more age and allow it to kind of uh, mellow out just a little bit more. Maybe kind of take away some of that uh, alcohol burn, burn and it would be an awesome, awesome draft. Uh, um, yeah, I just I think it could develop a little more with some more aging. I would still I would give it an 88 whiskey stones. I think it was really good. Uh, I will definitely be uh, keeping some uh, still Austin on my shelf. You know, props out to the Texas whiskey whiskey industry. Considering I am in the Republic of Texas, I hope you have enjoyed this episode as much as I have enjoyed it bringing it to you. Please hit like, subscribe, share, notify definitely hit that share button. Tell your friends. That's how I grow. Uh, and, and I'm really enjoying this ride. We have a new website. Uh, it is sticksandstones.com. S-T-I-C-K-S N, just the letter, stones, S-T-O-N-E-Z, dot com. It's very easy. Sticksandstones.com. All small letters, no hyphens, anything, nothing like that. Uh, please go check us out. There is a page for our episodes. There is a page for our Amazon merchandise, which includes our Sticks and Stones merchandise. I'd love to see some Sticks and Stones gear uh, uh, on people around town. Uh, and there's also a, uh, a page for the blog, which the blog will not only be alcohol and, and tobacco uh, related, I will, uh, I will have other stuff on there as well, things that I just write about. Uh, but you will also find alcohol and cigars there too. So definitely check that out. Until we get to be together again, keep your sticks dry, your stones cold, and have a great day.